Okay, this video covers doing basic descriptive statistics in the program JASP. If you will be doing something at more than descriptive statistics, then all the descriptives you are looking for are things such as the mean, standard deviation, etc., you do have the option of clicking a check mark to include those when you go to other analysis screens such as that for the ANOVA or T-test. However, this video is for those of you who are looking just for your general descriptive statistics, or maybe for plots or tables. To get these, once you have loaded your data and have it open to the Common tab, you can start by clicking on the, you guessed it, Descriptives button. In this window, you'll have all of your variables in the box on your left, and a box for ones to analyze on the right. To select any variable to analyze, simply click on it and either double-click or click on the little arrow in the middle to move it to the other box. If you decide not to include a variable, you can do the same process to move it back to the other box, and it will be taken out. If you want to analyze all variables, you can just click and hold from below the bottom one up to the top one to select them all, and then hit the arrow. You can see that the table with the descriptive statistics automatically comes up. All the variables will run across the top, and the statistics used will be on the side. It tells you how many you have, whether you are missing any, the mean, standard deviation, and the range. All of the variables in this example happen to be scale variables. What would happen if you had nominal or ordinal variables which wouldn't have a mean, etc.? Well, that's why there's a little check mark just for that kind of variable. I'm going to switch to a different data sample to demonstrate that. On this one, we have two nominal variables, gender and region, and an ordinal variable, education. By clicking on the check mark over here that says display frequency tables, it will make some new tables that include the frequency and percent of each of the levels of that variable. For gender, you now see how many females, how many males, and how many total there are in both counts and percents. Okay, back to the other data set. If you want more descriptive statistics than what you have already showing on the table, just go over to the little button that says Statistics and click on it. Here you have more options and you can see the ones that you already have automatically checked. You have the option of showing percentile values, measures of central tendency, such as the mean, median, mode, and sum. You also have the distribution with skewness and kurtosis values. And then you have dispersion, which allows you to show standard deviation, variance, range, minimum, maximum, and the standard error of the mean. You can select as many as you want, or as few as you need, and it will appear on your already existing descriptive statistics table. For instance, I'm going to go ahead and click on the median and mode, so that I can include both of those. I'm also going to include the standard error of the mean, skewness, and kurtosis. Now for plots. Often it helps to view plots of your data to get a better picture of what is happening. To view plots for your data, all you have to do is click the check mark in Display Plots. You can now look at a plot for each of your variables. As you can see, it shows you histograms of all of your variables. You can see that in this data, each variable is normally distributed. If you decide that you don't want the plots, though, or want to hide them during another analysis, simply uncheck the box and they will disappear. You can also show correlation plots. It shows the correlation between each pair of variables, starting with the histogram of one variable, followed by a scatter plot for each other variable. Looking through, you can get an idea about each of how each one relates to each other variable.
If you decide that you only want certain variables on your table, you can always go back and remove it, and watch them disappear from your table. As long as you can see your table. See, it is no longer either in the table or among your plots. The same can be said if you decide later that you want more than you initially had, and either forgot to include one or didn't think that you needed it and then changed your mind. The tables and charts are flexible while you're in JASP. But what if you want to take it out of JASP? That's easy too. All you have to do is click on the title of the table or plot, for instance this one, this table says that coffee table, and then on the side here, this one says coffee plot. Or if you want to do the entire analysis, you go up to the top and click on the arrow next to descriptives and click copy analysis. For this one, I'm going to just copy the table. Then you can go ahead and go over to your manuscript or any Microsoft Office Word document and go up to the corner and click Paste. If you selected Copy Analysis, it will give you all of it, every last little thing that you've done. So be careful if you are only just wanting one little plot. It does speed up the process, though, if you're wanting most of what you've done. But no need to get more than you need. Thankfully, JASP has designed its tables so that it's already almost APA ready. This speeds up the process by quite a lot. But what if you want to make several different tables? How do you go about that uh, if changing buttons uh, changes the chart in JASP? And uh, you don't want to copy each one as you go. If you click on Descriptives again, it will reproduce all of the current analyses. At first, the only noticeable thing is that the old analysis is now gray, while the new one is uh, white, like the one before that. However, you may notice that if you start to make changes, it only affects the new one. For instance, I'm going to remove my correlation plots, and they're all gone but they're still there up here. It only affects the new one whenever you make changes now. And that's because you now have two reports. They're both considered different analyses. If you want to make changes to the old one, all you have to do is click on it. It will make changes to whichever one is selected at the current time. This is very helpful if you want to make multiple tables that include different things without having to uh, copy and save over to Microsoft Word. In my opinion, this is an improvement from SPSS where all of your analyses are pasted into a single output, which quickly becomes long and cumbersome if you're trying to do long analyses. That can still happen with JASP, though, if you do multiple analyses. Uh, Every single time that you go to do descriptives, it comes up with a new one. And so you can start to scroll and scroll and scroll, and it'll take a while to find the one that you need. This is easy to fix, though, because you can remove the analyses that you don't want. To do this, you either go up to where there are three little dots underneath the OK button, click them, and click Remove Analysis. Now, the only problem with that is it kicks you back to the data viewing screen, and you still have all of your other analyses on the side. And you want to guess what happens when you hit Descriptives? It makes you a new one. You could spend all day clicking back and forth between that. So, an easier way to do it is to just click the arrow next to the header, like you would if you were copying the report over to a document, and just click Remove Analysis. 
it doesn't take you back to the data view screen and you can go through and delete as many as you want to or need to before it finally takes you back to the, the screen. At this point you can go ahead and start back with a new and fresh uh, descriptive chart with whatever your last entries were. And that's about all there is for descriptive statistics. It's pretty straightforward in JASP. Uh, hopefully you won't have any issues with it. Thanks for watching.